Marcus. Big Sean Harris. What is up? What's up, man? How's your trade going? Is it going good? Is it going bad? Dude, just stacking, stacking, stacking. It's a little bit boring right now. I won't lie. (laughs) Uh, Bitcoin-wise. I just noticed it's a lot more quiet on Bitcoin Twitter still. Price is still 20K, you know, rounding error. How's your (laughs) trade going, dude? Dude, my trade, uh, it's going pretty good. It's the same trade as always. That stack also, set. it seems like my connection just drops. Still oh, really? Yeah. 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 I just had a power outage here in Medellin. <sighs> Looks like I'm back. All right. Bear with me, guys. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and I, uh, I have a little bit of lunch. I just got back from Jackson Hole. I was cleaning up the mess that the Fed made out there a couple weeks ago. And uh, no, I was just out there with some friends. And now I'm back. Um, but uh, just got in. Me and Plan Marcus said, hey, let's record. So uh, we're recording. We, this might be a shorter one today, uh, but it'll still be good. So for everyone who's new to Bitcoiners Guide, welcome in. This is the show that we wish we would have had when we first started learning about Bitcoin. So we made it for you. Uh, Timestamp and price stamp today is currently Wednesday, September 14th, 2022. 2 13 p.m. in the Mountain Standard Time. The price of Bitcoin is currently $19,900 and some change down about 1.63% in the last 24 hours. So Bitcoin's price chilling at 20K. Uh, it went up to like 22K, maybe 23 even. Now it's back down to 20 um, then we got that new uh, we got that new CPI print and everything just tanked. It was like the Dow Jones, the S and P five hundred, the whole broader market, everything puked, and so did Bitcoin. So yes, we it, haven't decoupled yet. We haven't decoupled yet. No, the decoupling has not happened, and it may not happen for a while. But uh, yeah, CPI print came out. Just a, a couple of days ago, and we were sitting at what was it, Marcus? Eight point three percent, right? If I'm not mistaken, I believe. I believe the the I think they call it not core inflation, but the baseline inflation. I'm not sure. It dropped from eight point five to eight point three. Yes, but a detail that I read all over Twitter was that the core inflation, which does not include energy prices, actually rose from six point something to six point something higher <laughs> so yeah. even though energy um, seems to have dropped a little bit the prices of actually goods and services continue to increase yes uh, i did notice that the core inflation is at three point six point three percent um what's interesting is you know a lot of bitcoiners are noticing okay the price of gas went down but uh, what's going on currently right now is if you're, if you're paying attention, the U S has reserves, um, reserve gas or oil. They call it, what was it? S S P R reserve. I think is that what, what it was called? We're doing this on the fly. As you can tell, um, strategic oil reserves. Yeah. Strategic petroleum reserve. I just Googled it. Strategic petroleum reserve S P R. And, we had normally had, you know, a max capacity of our SPRs, basically oil that we have in reserve. And um, we've been putting that oil, that SPR online and have been getting rid of our reserves. So instead of having to buy new gas or buy oil, what the U.S. has done is gas that we've already bought. Now we're inserting that into the economy. What does that do? It obviously, it makes the price of gas go down in the short term. What does it do in the long term? Well, once we need to refill those SPRs, those strategic petroleum reserves, uh, when we have to refill those, then either the price of gas is going to shoot right back up, or when we run out of reserves, if we just use all of the reserves that we have, Because, you know, that's the Keynesian way, right? What do we need reserves for? Why do we need to have this? Let's just have a just-in-time supply schedule. We don't need to have anything extra. 
there will never yeah, be a reason to have it. So why does we might as well just use all of it, right? And so I think that's what we're getting to is getting to a place where we might lose all our reserves. No, I don't think so. I have a little different view on this. I think that you're underestimating the, the strategy of the US of the US here. Okay, okay. I think they're very good. I yeah. think they're very good at filling up the reserves when the prices are low. Ooh. I think they're very good at selling when the prices are high. I think this is um, this is big money for the US. Yeah, I guess it's uh it's a way to play uh oil arbitrage in a sense, right? It's like uh, I don't know, right? Like I'm just some dork off the street, right? <laughs> but no, it's it's, it's, a, it's a, something that you, that you don't think about, right? Like if you think about someone who's a who's like a Bitcoin trader, right? What's their goal? Buy Bitcoin, buy Bitcoin low, hold it, and then sell imagine, it high, yeah. and then wait for the price. Imagine to Imagine if there is some way, you know, you create a conflict somewhere, and you know, there's going to be like energy scarcity. You know? Yes, well, let's sell it then. And when things come back a little normal, that's when you fill up your strategic oil reserves again. And, you know, rinse and repeat. That is a very interesting thing. I like that, Marcus. I haven't thought about that before. But it, but in essence, the U.S. could be oil traders. And in, and by being oil traders, but not trading future, they're trading real oil. That way uh, they could they could make inflation go down in, in a sense. That would be that would be pretty ballsy, number one, and it would be pretty smart of the U.S. government. So, you know, maybe we shouldn't count the U.S. out just yet. If, if uh, yeah, if I don't, I don't want to get too conspiratorial, and I don't, you know, like obviously I'm a little bit, you know, we like to do that here. <laughs> We're bitcoiners. We don't trust anybody. We always, you know, game theory everything. Yeah, but. Um, where was I getting? <laughs> oh my god! I just lost my train of thought. Sorry, dude. I'll get back to you. It'll, it'll I don't come back to me in a little bit. I don't think it's conspiratorial to say a government it will buy gas cheap. Uh, they'll hold it in the reserves, and when prices get ex more expensive, which happens seasonally in in gas and oil, when prices get more expensive, then they'll release some of those reserves to to help out with the citizens of their country i don't think that's very conspiratorial that i mean that seems like a, what a good government yeah. should do right the thought, the thought is back you know a, a, another thing that's been in the news a lot is how much money has been going to the ukraine right yes and then i see people tweeting about like oh my god like we don't why are we sending so much money to the ukraine and uh, we have trouble as it is but Honestly, I don't think a lot of people realize that that is a way for the U.S. to make money off of this stuff, right? Because you print a bunch of money, it doesn't cost anything, right? Yes. You you send that to Ukraine. What does Ukraine do with that money? They buy a lot of, you know, weapons and ammo and all kind of support from outside, whether it's from the EU, EU or primarily from the United States, probably. You know, so yeah. it funds the war machine. Next thing, uh, that money is being used to destroy the country, you know, fighting Russia or fighting Russians, a lot of stuff gets demolished. Now, when the time comes, stuff needs to get rebuilt. So what happens? Ukraine, you owe us a lot of money, you know, because we, we helped you out. We send you a lot of money. So the least you can do is let our contracts help, contractors help you build back. You know, you need new generators for your power plants. They got to be U.S. built. You know, you need contractors to set it up, build bridges, whatnot. It's all U.S. contractors going there. Yeah. Plus, by the way, we need you to pay back that loan we gave you. So <laughs> now, now we owe you in, in debt. This is like something that's going on on and on. You know, it's like the, the theory of a economic hitman. You know? Yes. So it's been done a lot of times. So that's, that's the way I view it. I know that's not the way a lot of people a lot of people might get angry with me but uh, i think that's what's going on oh yeah i'm i'm outraged and i'm triggered by that opinion marcus <laughs> <laughs> and no i don't think, i don't think people would uh, get too outraged by that i mean the reality is uh what, what's the old saying don't let a good create a good crisis go to waste so uh, whenever there's a crisis at hand uh, people are going to try to, they're going to, even if, even if the crisis must happen, people, there will always be people that will benefit from that. So, you know, that's, that's just the nature of how the world works. Yeah. Agreed. Yes. Yeah. All right. 
let's uh, let's pivot to the other big uh, headline uh, this week. Okay, so uh, literally playing out right now. We're in the third day of the um, Huddle Nut versus CSW. Yes. And um, honestly, uh, we've we've been following a little bit right online to see what's going on. Uh, so far, what I've seen is it looks like Craig uh, is kind of getting exposed so far for being a fake, being a fraud. That would be Craig Wright, who says he's Satoshi Nakamoto. Uh, and everyone else realizes that he's a fraud because all he would have to do to prove that he's Satoshi is show that he has control of the keys of Satoshi's Bitcoin. And if he can do that, then he can prove that he is Satoshi. And if he can't do that, well, then there's no proof. Um, what, what have you been seeing so far, Marcus? Yeah, so what we know is, is that uh, this case right now is, uh, is being held in Norway. So um, Craig's lawyers, I believe he has a team of like nine lawyers or something. There was this UK lawsuit, I believe it was against uh, Peter McCormack. Uh, that has just passed, you know, so that UK law, law team is there as well. Uh, now they have some Norwegian lawyers there as well. And um, this is against Holland, not who is obviously a Norwegian citizen. That's why it's being done in, uh, in Norway. Anyway, I don't want to go into the whole backstory, but we're in day three. I believe in the first day, it was uh, Holland, not who was able to... Um, you know, they just had the Hollandout's lawyer was able to just um, talk all day. The second day it was Craig Wright's lawyers talking about all day. Uh, it seemed that they're trying to throw it on by like, freedom of speech, and they were reading a bunch of tweets about Hollandout, how he's like an online bully, and bullying <laughs> Craig Wright, and uh, that's a very toxic environment, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, and today there was the first day of the cross examinations, which was funny because there were there were some questions uh, towards uh, Craig Wright about those keys, you know, like why can't he sign those keys? Mm -hmm. And that's when Craig Wright went on like this fuzzy rant <laughs> about the whole point of Bitcoin is that you don't need keys and Bitcoin <laughs> can be completely seized by the by, by the authorities by and court it's not order encrypted at all. Yeah. So he seems to be already like digging his own hole by day three. You know, at least when you're a Bitcoin and you understand Bitcoin and you hear the things he's saying, you realize it's total garbage. But then again, you always have to remember that if you're trying <laughs> to let a normie, a judge in this case, who has to try and figure this all out, I'm not sure about her knowledge of Bitcoin, etc. It might be really confusing, you know? <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, let's see how it plays out. One yeah, of the then, funniest things somebody somebody tweeted out this week as well is like this old clip of Craig Wright, where he's literally on video saying that Satoshi plagiarized him. Him, yes, yeah. yes. <laughs> so this guy has like been proven that he's like twisting and turning and changing a story all the time. Yep. He obviously has no control of these keys, like you said. That would be the easiest thing. Just prove your Satoshi by just moving those keys and done. You know. Yeah. But obviously, he doesn't have them. He's like this. Okay. Yeah. Just sign. Just sign a transaction with those keys. Yeah. yeah that's good. But uh, in, the, in, the, in the meantime, Hodl and Art is being, uh, being doxxed in court. Yeah. yeah. He has to sit through. Has Sucks. to sit through this thing. And it's, it's kind of scary how, like, this guy, uh, CSW, is able to just go car, court case after court case after court case, you know, hitting developers hitting all kinds of people uh, up with lawsuits, making them incur a bunch of cost and money and can just keep going and going and going. I, that's, that's my biggest, uh, <laughs> yeah. No, yeah like that's, I'm, I'm missing the English word for it. No, it's but like it's a, a frustrated, frustrated feeling, I guess. Yeah. Frustration, right? That's just, that he could, that he, because he has access to a billionaire, Calvin Air, then he can go around and sue whoever he wants to, dox, publicly dox whoever he wants to, and just because he has money. And I think that's what's so important about Bitcoin is that Bitcoin is not proof of stake. And that's, that's what it is. Dude has money, so he has more stake, proof of stake. Bitcoin's proof of work. And, and 
every at every moment you have to show that you can do the work and and he just goes up there i mean how could satoshi create bitcoin and create it like he did and the things that he's written about it like in 2009 you know he wrote the you know 2008 right he wrote the white paper and all those things and then if craig wright were supposedly if he was supposedly satoshi then he can come out and say oh well it can actually be seized by the government it can be frozen by, by a court order and all this other garbage right it's like obviously the dude is not satoshi you know he doesn't care he doesn't care about bitcoin he cares about himself he's narcissistic and if you read any of the writings of satoshi which i've read quite a few of satoshi's writings he is a very uh satoshi is very strategic uh he's not very emotional in his writing um and he's normally sacrificing everything so bitcoin can survive and so that's what's really interesting about yeah the craig Wright is the opposite the what he the, his personality does not match the personality of satoshi yeah sorry i, I cut out there for a little bit i think i'm back now yeah 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 you're back uh some some other fun facts i'm trying to uh, remember here about uh, craig Wright. apparently there was some expert on autism in, in, in like the Florida case or something <laughs> that yeah. I read about who claimed that Craig Wright is impossible, not capable of lying. So, ah. so he wanted to try and call this same, the same expert witness in the Norwegian case. So I'm not sure if we're still going to see that, but that's just fun fact. Other fun fact uh, in another court case, because Craig Wright has actually won uh some court cases in the uk mm -hmm. um, if you google the bitcoin white paper from the uk you actually get a copy of the bitcoin white paper with craig wright being the author of the white paper so people in the uk researching the bitcoin white paper might actually think he is this the real author because if you google it that's what's being shown to you so he's, he's just how can i get this far you know, this guy is crazy to Bitcoin. Yes. He's obviously crazy, but everybody who called him out as being crazy is getting slapped with lawsuits. So everybody's like, well, I'm not touching that. I'm not, I'm not going to put his name in my mouth. In the meantime, he gets to go around saying that he's Satoshi. So all the people who don't know much about Bitcoin think he actually is and give him way more attention than he should. And at the same time, nobody wants to debunk it or wanted to debunk it because so... It's just been this festering uh, <laughs> side story of, uh, of Bitcoin, as if all the shit coins aren't enough. Here we have another. <laughs> I mean, it is a crazy soap story, if you ask me. So yeah, it's yeah. uh, it's like it's like uh, I mean, if if anyone reads the Bible, right? There's all these false prophets that come up and say whatever, say that they're the Messiah and all this stuff. And that's kind of like what, uh, what, uh, Craig Wright's trying to do. He's, he's trying to be like this false prophet trying to say that he is something that he's not, or even in today's world, right. You have a lot of people that are de delusional, you know, you can, you, they think whatever I identify is what I am. And, and that's not true. Like you, there's some things that are set in stone. That is what you are. If you're born a certain way, that's what you are. It's who you are. And Satoshi wants to just identify, or I keep saying Satoshi, this is crazy. Craig Wright wants to identify himself as Satoshi. And you meant, you meant fake Toshi, right? Yeah, fake Toshi. Craig Wright is a fraud. Fake Toshi wants to identify himself as Satoshi Nakamoto. And he's obviously not to anyone that understands an inkling about Bitcoin and has and has paid attention for the last few years would obviously know that he's not Satoshi. So, you know, it's easy to tell. He, he is banking on the fact that number one, people don't know much about Bitcoin. They don't know much about his history. They don't know much about Satoshi. And then number two, he's banking on that these judges and the, that these court systems, the people are stupid. That's what he is banking on because it, that he's telling them that oh you you can't seize or you can seize bitcoin from a court order uh but if you hold the private keys no one can seize the bitcoin from you you are the one who has the control to sign 
if you have those keys and if, and if no one has access to those keys. So he's banking on these people being stupid, the judges, the court system, court of law, and he's banking on them not knowing much about Bitcoin. And maybe he's banking on that in the fiat world, the court of law has its set of rules and he can finagle his way around and find some loophole where he wins. You know, he's banking on all those three things. But I think Hodlo Knot, which I think that's how you pronounce his name, is his name is Hodlo Knot, not Hodl Knot. Hodlo Knot is the one who really is prepared and he's ready for all of the things that he knows what Craig Wright's case is. He knows what Craig Wright is going to say, what he's going to do. There's no surprises. So Hodlo Knot's ready and he's and he's prepared. So this will be this will be very fun to watch how it plays out and watch him win, uh, not only in Norway but also in the UK. Yeah, and obviously he's got a lot of support from uh, all the Twitter plebs. Everybody has his uh, you know Hodlo Knot spacesuit around their avatar. He's raised uh, a lot of Bitcoin in support of his court case, so uh, he yeah. should be well funded and well prepared. So let's, um, yeah. Yes. So let's hope for the best. Yes. Yep. Okay. A couple more things in news before before we head out. Uh, we were just talking. So it looks like El Salvador on Monday they issued um, a proposal or an offer to buy back a portion of its sovereign debt bonds that mature in 2023 and 2025. So just a little bit about this from the from an article in Fortune. Um, it says El Salvador established a purchase price of $910 for the bonds maturing in 2023 and a $540 price for those bonds maturing in 2025. Each bond is worth a total of $800 million. Bukele himself said, today we have officially launched the purchase offer for all our external debt due from 23 to 25. All holders of bonds of the Republic of El Salvador can access this public and voluntary repurchase. So then the last thing is that the volcano bond, so this is not the volcano bond um, that they're trying to buy back. The volcano bond hasn't been issued yet, and it still does not have a launch date, but it was announced back in November of 2021. Um, yeah, so let, let's try and break this down a little bit, Sean. Yes. Can you hear me? Yes. Yeah. Sorry if I keep cutting out. I mean, no, the no. connection is very unstable here. Yeah, so I, when I when I think of like state bonds, what we're talking about here, right? You're talking about a sovereign debt. So if a country needs money, they will issue a bond. Yes. Right? They'll give they'll give out an IOU. People can buy that IOU, which is essentially funding. You know, they get cash in return for that IOU, and usually there's some coupon attached to it. Like you get a certain fixed income per year, right? So you get like. Uh, and X percentage, whatever, whatever the going rate is for that bond. I mean, obviously, if you think that the country is highly likely to default on that bond, then the the, the interest rate has to be really high or the coupon yeah. has to be really high yeah. for people to still want to buy this, right? So this is just some basic stuff about bonds. It's a way for government to be able to get money. So what Bukele is saying right now is saying he's there. there's a bunch of bonds out there and I want to buy them back because I don't, I want to reduce my, the debt, my okay. outstanding debt. Correct. Yes. Yes. All right. All right. Yeah, exactly. So, and this is really interesting, right? There could be, there could be some reasons. Obviously there's reasons why they're doing this. Um, but, you know, it would seem that a country that has less debt, this is what they're trying to do is have less debt. So it seemed that a country that has less debt um, would be more credit worthy. And so uh, just like you're saying, right, a country that that you're not sure if are they going to pay back their bonds or they're not, well, then they're going to have a higher interest rate, that they're going to have to pay, which, you know, if you're a junk bond guy, that, that's great for you, because you want high interest, you want high yield debt, because that's what you're looking for. And you know, like you've played your statistics. So you know, okay, well, some of these bonds are going to fail, and, and they're going to default, and I won't get paid back the money. But if I get enough of them, you know, then I'm going to have some high yield on here. And, you know, a bond like right now, you know, the 10 year treasury bond is yielding what somewhere around two to 3%. So that's where the 10 years at. And that's the US treasury bond. So that's not that much. And if you include CPI inflation is at 8.3%. If you're getting 3% back, 
from a bond in the United States, while it's inflation is at 8.3 percent, well, that's five percent that you're losing. Uh, so, so purchasing you, power, correct? Yeah, but purchasing power. So that's why that's why some people would, okay, let me venture out to developing countries like El Salvador or what other countries, and maybe they have a 15 percent coupon on that on their sovereign what, what, sovereign debt. What I want to know is, I don't know how much of this uh, he's buying back. You have that article there, but like, where yeah, are you getting the money from to buy all that stuff back? Yeah, so each each bond, so there's two bonds that they're looking for, right? So there's the one that matures in 2023, or bonds that mature in 2023 and bonds that mature in 2025. So the ones that, and it's 800 million each. So that's $1.6 billion in in cash. That's a lot of money for uh, for El Salvador. Yeah, so the question is, you know, where are they getting this from? But they did have a ton of, if, I remember that they had a bunch of tourism the last, over the last year. So I don't think, yeah, they've gotten I don't 1. think it's 1.6 billion. billion. <laughs> 1.6 billion, not trillion, 1.6 billion. 1.6 billion. Yeah, there's a big difference between 1.6 billion and 1.6 trillion. So yeah, I don't know how many don't, how many millions of tourists come there, but they you know, not that, a lot of money. Not that much. They're not getting that much back. So look, yeah, that's, it's not like and it's not like every tourist uh, pays. Uh, I mean, they might pay some airport tax or whatever. It's not like they're all directly funding the state. So yeah, yeah, you got to pay a twelve dollar a twelve dollar immigration fee when you come into El Salvador. But it's not, that's not, yeah, I don't think that's, some, I mean, they, and they are starting to mine. They've started to mine, but not, probably not $1.6 billion worth. No so that's way. a good question. No. Where, where have they got the money from? Maybe they've, maybe they've started to uh, save up. I don't, honestly, I don't know. It does not say. I do know. I, I do know they, they, you know, Bukele is always boasting about there's no more homicides going on because he's locked up pretty much everyone with a with a tattoo uh, of a, with a gang sign tattoo. Yes. Maybe maybe they uncovered some secret uh, money stashes uh, left. And right. <laughs> Who knows? Yeah, maybe they've seized up some gang money. Who knows? Yeah, it could right. be very lucrative. Yeah. Hey, you know, have you ever watched uh, Narcos? Pablo Escobar's out in the back digging holes to put money in. So. Right. Right. He, like you just you don't know where where that. He had some guy called Blackbeard, wasn't it? In uh, Narcos or in, yeah. the, in real life, I guess. <laughs> There's a guy called Blackbeard, if I'm not mistaken, who uh, who who held on to the map of where all the treasure was uh, buried. Yeah. Uh, okay. Yeah. I didn't. I didn't even know that. But yeah, maybe they found. But the it's interesting, and you know, at the same time, it's like, all right, we've been hearing at least yeah, last year there was a lot of hype and noise about, you know, he's gonna be like first country to, um, to come out with a volcano bond, you know, bonds backed by Bitcoin and yeah. etc. But it's been quiet really, uh, really long, and we just don't really know what's the deal. There's not much information coming out, and now we hear this news, and it's not tied to Bitcoin. So it makes me, yeah, it it, it just makes me think maybe maybe the announcement of the volcano bonds was a little premature, right? Like, and so, and maybe they're like, okay, we actually got to figure out a couple other things first before we really want to go ahead with that. And maybe this is one of the things that they're trying to do is saying, Hey, look, we have, we have $1.6 billion in debt that we want to actually bring back. We don't want to have that debt. And so we're going to pay off those debts. And maybe by doing that, it makes, the interest rate on the coupons lower because now they become more credit worthy and that can save them more money and interest payments over the long run. So that could be something that they're, that they're thinking about. Um, honestly, I just, I don't know because it's, what's really interesting, right. Is they're looking to buy back 1.6 million, $1.6 billion, but they were looking to get, if I'm not mistaken, it wasn't it a, a billion dollar, bond that they were looking at in, uh, issuing and 500 million would be going to purchasing Bitcoin and the other 500 million would be going into building Bitcoin city um, yeah. for the infrastructure of that city. So uh, now they, now they have $1.6 billion on hand. So it, that's just a little interesting, you know, I'm not sure, I'm not sure where it's all coming from or why, but they're obviously doing something and if I know anything about Naib Bukele, this dude is pretty smart and he's, he's doing things that we, maybe we don't know the reason for, but 
I think he's pretty smart and he's doing and he's making good moves. And so there's probably oh, absolutely there's probably absolutely. a very good reason behind all of this and where he's getting the money from and how he's doing it and why they're waiting to do the volcano bond. And I'm sure it's all calculated. I'm sure there's a very good strategy behind it and it's going to pay off in the end. Now we're what, just what, we what, have to sit what, back and watch why. <laughs> Dude, what, what makes me bullish is just thinking about, you know, like just four years ago, we were in another, in another bear market and we were there like speculating about, you know, like what next big company yes. or what ne next big uh, millionaire celebrity is going to come out and say, I bought, I'm buying Bitcoin. And here we are literally talking about countries, you know, getting into Bitcoin. When are these Bitcoin bonds coming out? We have uh, Michael Saylor who announced this week again that he's going to try and raise another 500 million, presumably to buy more Bitcoin. Yeah, we have in Canada Pierre Polivier, if I say his name correctly, you know, the leader yes. of the Conservative Party, who just became the leader there, who's very outspoken uh, Bitcoiner and uh, sound money guy. And you know, you see literally like Bitcoin just going on higher and higher levels, and we're talking at yeah, I don't know. It's just that uh, the the story just keeps developing in the right direction, and uh, the price is just lagging, in, uh, in my view. Yeah, I just, I just, I just can't imagine what we're going to be talking about in the next four years. You know? Yeah, so. I mean, even and and the price is it's underpriced, obviously, but I mean, last bear market we weren't even thinking about. I mean, I don't know what everyone else was thinking, but I wasn't even thinking about companies buying. I was thinking about like, you know, you had like the CME futures, or you had in 2019. There's like a like backed. B A K T or B A K K T or things like that. They're like, oh, the Bitcoin is going to get listed right. here or there, like things like that. You know, you weren't even, I wasn't even thinking about, oh, a publicly traded company is going to come on board. There's going to be billionaires out there like Michael Saylor or Paul Tudor Jones or Bill Miller. They're going to be advocating for Bitcoin, calling themselves Bitcoiners or Bitcoin maximalists. You know, like who would have ever thought that that would happen so fast? And so now you just, you, you nailed it, right? Now we have companies, countries, and we're in the bear market. Like you don't think, you don't have the feeling Bitcoin's going to die or it's dead. Where back then you're like, dude, I could put all my money in here and this could go to zero where it doesn't feel like that at all anymore. Right. Yeah. The only thing is still like this whole, um, no, and then you still get attacked on Twitter, like, oh, dude, Bitcoin is old tech, you know, and crypto is not going anywhere, but Bitcoin is dead, and the merge is going to do it, and <laughs> energy. So we still have all that FUD going on, you know. Yeah. So I, I hopefully in four years we'll, uh, we, yeah, yeah, hopefully more people see the light a little bit or um, get some more clarity there. That'd yeah, be good. Exactly. Well, I have to go right now, and this is going to be a little bit shorter than normal, but Marcus, this is always, I mean, it's always fun just sitting down and chatting with you. Yeah. So let's thanks. see uh, what we got to discuss next week. And yeah. um, don't forget the having party. It's going to be good. Do not forget the having party. It's going to be a blast in El Salvador, uh, 2024. Be there with the rest of the plebs. Enjoy it. Again, um, this week we have the Mean Factory podcast. Uh, Thursday at 7.30 p.m. Uh, don't miss it. It's going to be fun, like always. And one big other shout out. We've been streaming on Fountain App, the app where you can tip and donate with Lightning. And we actually have some listeners who tipped us in Lightning. Just a couple of sets, but we appreciate those. You know, it's a sign of uh, we've got listeners. There's life out there. Thank mm -hmm. you, guys. Love yeah, you. Thank and, you. Um, I think it was I, I dad dude, if we pronounce that correctly, and Stephen Bitcoin or Stephen Bitcoin. Uh, hopefully, we're pronouncing your guys' uh, avatars correctly, your names. So, uh, again, hey, remember what you see here, what you hear here. When you leave here, don't just let it stay here. Please share. Uh, check us out on Fountain. Um, if, you, if you enjoy it, send some stats. If not, no, you don't have to. Uh, and uh, let some people know. Uh, that shout out to bow dog shout outs and as for bitcoiners guide episode three zero number 30 we keep it dirty from plan markers and big sean we're over now peace see you next week <laughs>